Hey guys, welcome to our special GBWC video where we talk about the results from the Malaysia, Thailand and also Singapore event. This is going to be a long video, it's not going to be our usual short video as I try to process as much as I can as what happened over the last few weekends from the GBWC in those three countries. Now this video was supposed to be released last week but I really needed time to process the results from the winners of all three countries and again re-looking back into all the entries Entries. And given that I had the opportunity to visit Singapore and also look at the Malaysia entries, it was really quite interesting to see what was available and what was presented by all the Gunpla builders in both countries. And of course, looking through the all the entries from GWC Thailand as well, it was quite interesting to see the contrast between the build, the concept, and also the overall finishing and technique that's been presented in all three countries. Now, given that this is going to be a long video, well, you could try to try and listen to me as I do this like a podcast video as you build, or just turn off the audio completely and just play your own music as you go through all the beautiful entries from all three countries right now. Now, before we talk about GBWC Singapore, I just want to say a very big thank you to all of you who are tuning in. And if you like what you see, hey, please subscribe and give me a like, you know, it will really help our small little channel. And of course, I would love to hear you guys sound off as well in terms of what you think of the overall results in GBWC Malaysia, Singapore and Thailand. Now let's talk about GBWC Singapore, right? I was lucky enough to visit Singapore at the time of the event on the last day itself. One thing that I noticed was the entire venue of GBWC Singapore was a lot smaller than I expected. It was half the size of the GBWC Expo as what I usually see in Malaysia, so that was a big surprise to me. Expo kits were plenty, but the space to actually look through all the kits that you can actually buy, the special deals, it was a little bit tough because it was situated right next to the exhibition of the entries from all the GBWC contestants. So imagine trying to look through some kits to buy while people are bumping into you. It's quite a not pleasant experience. So yeah, so if you're gonna buy some kits in GBWC Singapore, you really have to make up your mind very quickly and know what you actually want. One other quite interesting observation was there aren't as many entries as compared to GBWC Malaysia and Singapore. So from what I've heard on the chatter on the social media platforms, there were actually quite a lot of entries that has been disqualified because they were using third party decals, third party stands, third party parts, you know, they doesn't fit the Gundam team. So there were actually quite a lot of entries that's been disqualified and I know quite a lot of Singapore builders are not very happy. So yeah, there aren't really that many entries to really look through it in GBWC Singapore as well. But one thing that I do really love and what I think the exhibitors or the sponsors got right for this particular event is the showcase. Somehow GBWC Singapore, they really got the lighting right. It is not too bright, but it's just enough light to showcase all the beautiful works from the GBWC Singapore contestants. So I wish all GBWC entries and display cabinets across Southeast Asia will be able to follow the same way they light the display case as what you see in Singapore, right? Um, interestingly enough, when I was in GBWC Singapore, it was the time where they were giving away the prize, where they were announcing the winners. The entire prize giving ceremony was actually quite fast, you know, it was as if the organizers were trying to quickly give out the prizes so they can wrap up and, um, you know, clean up <laughs> from the venue of the mall itself. So that was actually quite interesting. It was a lot faster and not something that I am accustomed to because I will tell you a little bit more later when we get into GBWC Malaysia. And of course, one other interesting observation for Singapore was there was actually a lot of 160 scale entries, so much more than what I used to see in a GBWC contest such as this, right? Now, the winning entry of the over 21 category was definitely a very big surprise and this signifies the begin of the big reset of the GBWC judges picking the big pieces, you know, with great techniques and great airbrush uh, skills being displayed. So no matter what your concept, finishing or paint job is, this time around, 
2022 really signifies a very big reset in terms of how the judges pick the winners. So yeah, it's actually quite interesting. If you really think back the last few years, most of the GBWC kids that has been winning across the few countries in Asia, they were largely big kids, big dioramas, something like mobile armor, you know, those used to be those big entries. So yeah, this year, 2022, signifies the big reset that a lot of people were not prepared for. So there were a lot of um, upset Gunpla builders in both Malaysia, Singapore and Thailand that their uh, kids did not win. But then again, like I said, this year really signifies the big change in terms of how the judges pick winners for GBWC moving forward. Now let's talk about GBWC Thailand, right? GBWC Thailand is interesting because this time around, it is the first ever GBWC that's been held at the brand new Ganam based Thailand at uh, Siam Paragon, if I'm not mistaken, right? So this is actually the first time ever in Southeast Asia, a GBWC event is being held at a Gundam based outlet. From the pictures that we have seen, it seems to be quite a spacious event with plenty of space to showcase all the entries. And seriously, this time around, there were a lot of entries, so much more compared to Malaysia and also uh, Singapore. So again, I'm gonna to touch about that. This seems like some kids, probably would have gotten disqualified if they were you know entered into singapore but this time around there were a lot of kids that was not actually disqualified okay the display case lighting is really nice just like gbwc japan so i really like how they light up the display case in thailand as well and of course i think one of the biggest bonus of attending gbwc thailand is the ability to buy gbwc expo kits right at the gundam based thailand outlet itself so this is actually a very big bonus and i'm probably making my trip there very soon big pit was actually at gundam based thailand not too long ago uh, there's a video that i'm going to put up on his footage so i will share that very very soon now the entries from thailand this year is actually quite impressive and that's after looking through all the entries comparing with malaysia and singapore I do find that there were some more, uh, sorry, I do find that there are more creative expressions and ideas presented here. Some of the entries really made me go, wow, you know, it's just so amazing new ideas and refreshing concepts. So that is something that I think um, perhaps more builders in all the countries that's participating in GBWC next year, maybe there's something that you would want to take into consideration when you're submitting your GBWC entry in the future. Don't just focus on the technicalities of showcasing your building skills of using plow plates or airbrushing. Just think about creating a cool concept, a cool idea that can wow the judges and some people looking through the entries, right? In fact, next year, I even might make a trip down to cover GBWC Thailand, depending if the dates are clashing with Malaysia or Singapore. Now, there were also quite a lot of entries that are also quite funny, such as the one with that comes with its own GBWC trophy. There was also one entry where it's uh, modeling after the Tinker statue. And there was also one entry where there was a invisible Gundam death sign yeah, so there was quite a few funny entries that when you look at it, it just really make you laugh, right? You know that those entries is not going to win, but it's just there to make folks laugh looking at the overall entry itself. So all in all, to be frank, I think this year, GBWC Thailand have a good chance of being in the runner-up for GBWC final in Japan. And of course, this year, there are no winners flying to Japan because this year is going to be mainly online. So yeah this is the big change this year 2023 is probably going to be the year where everybody is going to be able to travel again to japan so that's where we're going to see that okay now let's move on to malaysia malaysia was quite a fun event you know it is quite a big venue back in paradigm mall and it was great fun seeing everybody again and thanks to all of you who came and say hi to me and i think one of the biggest draw to GBWC Malaysia is not the export kits and not the high amounts of entries 
but it's also all the fun activities on the last day itself that we used to see you know there is a speed build contest there is a lucky draw so there's actually quite a lot of activities going around before they actually announce the winner and surprise surprise this year when they were announcing the winners quite a few winners was actually not at the venue itself when they were actually announcing the winners for all the different category okay one note that i want to share with all the gunpla builders in malaysia please stop submitting gundam barbatos there are way too many gundam barbatos entries in this year's gbwc malaysia it was just quite dull I, I, I suppose you know seeing the same mobile suit over and over again despite the many different renditions and creative concepts and dioramas I'm just probably a little bit fatigued from seeing way too many Barbatos entries in Malaysia. If you compare that with all the entries from Thailand and also Singapore, I think Malaysia probably has the most <laughs> Barbatos entries in any other GBWC in this part of the world. One interesting thing to note was that a lot of people have been commenting on this on social media, so it's not just me, but there were actually quite a lot of entries where everyone felt that should have been disqualified from even being able to be displayed at the event itself. So uh, there were quite, actually quite a lot of few entries using third-party decals, third-party stands. So yeah, it's give and take, I suppose. I, I'm not too sure how the judges decide what kids are disqualified and whatnot. But then again, if you look at the entries has been disqualified in different parts of the world where GBWC is held, it does seem that there is no hard and fast rule where they say certain kits can be displayed even though they are using third party display kits i guess this time around the organizers in malaysia just wanted to showcase a lot more entries to encourage the builders you know young and old to give them the chance to display their work yeah so that's that's actually quite an interesting part right uh, there was actually quite an interesting thing about the winners obviously the winners in malaysia wow again if you remember, I made a video on my predictions of who would win in GBWC Malaysia, the first top three runner-up. Everything was totally wrong. As I mentioned, this year is the big reset. So all of my predictions were totally wrong, out of the door, which is quite rare if you've been following our channel. Usually our predictions are 80% spot on, but this time around, wow. Like I said, winds of change, right? Big Dharma, big entry kits with a lot of um, technical showcase of their build expertise is not enough to just cut it to win the GBWC trophy this time around. Okay, so that's actually quite interesting. Now let's talk about the kits on sale. This time around, after two years of absence, there was actually quite a lot of normal and also export kits on sale. Now what was interesting this time around was Usually, you will be able to see the same SKUs of stocks available from the first few days of the expo until the end of the expo, right? So that was usually what we go through in the past few years of GBWC. But this time around, I think the buying frenzy was really crazy, right? All the kits that were on sale in the first week of GBWC Malaysia, they were all sold out by the second week and on the last day itself. So quite a lot of products were sold out very quickly. And I think that is thanks to probably number one, you know, it's been so long since we had a GBWC event, obviously. And secondly, I think the organizers really went down and gave really great value on some of the older Expo kits, which to be frank, is really, really cheap. It's even better than buying from the scalpers and everybody was just snapping up thousands and thousands worth of products on the day itself. And one of the reasons why a lot of people like to buy a lot of Expo kits at GBWC Malaysia, oh sorry, they like to buy Gunpla kits at GBWC Malaysia is because there is a chance for them to actually participate in the lucky draw itself on the last day of the event. So that is one thing that actually uh, drive the purchase behavior of a lot of people at GBWC Malaysia. For me, myself, well, I only managed to get the special coding Gundam Desahel. Maybe I'll do a review on that when I have time to build it. And also the Torgis 2 Titanium Finish. 
Unfortunately, there were a lot of Expo kits that I wanted to buy, such as the real grade uh, clear crossbone, real grade Garam wing as well. A lot of those kits were sold out fairly quickly in the first few days because, to be frank, I really can't compete with all the buyers, right? A lot of the buyers were actually lining up way before the mall even opened up. Like 9 o'clock, they were already lining up waiting to buy the uh, Expo Kit Special at GBWC. The good thing is, even though the distributors or the organizers has been restocking, replenishing the stock every few hours, every day, still, I think the demand just pretty much outstripped the supply that was available from the organizers. So that was actually quite interesting. And one other interesting to note also this year for GBWC Malaysia, one particular studio from Penang Island called PG Hobby Art Studio. Their students actually won two awards, which was quite impressive. One of the entries um, showcased a very nice looking, I can't remember that mobile suit off my head, but it has a very nice airbrush and um, color coating and overall finishing onto that particular kit. That was actually a very nice kit that I really like and I'm glad that guy actually uh, got a placement in that particular category. So, what do you guys think of the overall entry and also the uh, winners for GBWC Malaysia, Thailand, Singapore? I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section. But some parting words from me and also some of the experience builders, right? I think number one, with the big reset happening this year in 2022 across Malaysia, Singapore and Thailand, I think we should not take out the hate on the winners, right? Because there were so many entries. I think everybody was just submitting for fun, you know, trying to see their luck if they can win. So don't hate on the winners because they did not get a chance to say whether they're going to win, right? The winners were decided by the judges. And if you look at the judges, um, how do I say this? If you look at the judges' decision on why they picked the winners in these few countries, I think perhaps that pretty much uh, solidified the winds of change of going back to the essence of Gundam, right? So they are now looking for people who are going to be submitting entries that is not just gigantic, monstrous, but really something simple that showcases what Gundam and Gunpla is all about. And of course, this year, with no travel to Japan, the winners pretty much don't get anything except the trophy and the winner's uh, special smoke clear RS-100-2 hybrid kit and some other prizes from the local organizers across the region. So that's actually quite interesting um, this year. This year's the big of change really shocked a lot of the old timers. Um, so much so that there was actually one particular Bidder, I believe he's from Indonesia, where he's saying that, look, what is so wrong about submitting an entry into GBWC with the aim of winning, right? Not everybody wants to enter GBWC just for the sake of having fun because there's actually a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of effort being put into creating those work of arts into GPWC and I can see where that particular chap is coming from, right? Obviously, a lot of um, the old timers, especially where they buy a lot of materials, a lot of plant plates, some of them even go as far as putting in special LED lights, doing the wiring, um, cr creating special uh, dioramas. Those actually takes a lot of time, effort, and of course, money, right? Mon time is probably the biggest resource that you can use to go into creating your GBWC entry. So I think there's no right or wrong, I suppose, you know, if you are planning to enter GBWC just to have fun, showcase your work and learn from people, meet some new friends, that's fine. But if you really think that, hey, I want to enter GBWC just to win and I'm going to be sore about it if I don't, well, dude, that's pretty much your call and uh, there's nothing much anybody else can do to help you out on that, right? There's no right or wrong. I think everybody do what they want. Gampla is freedom. But looking at the GBWC champion and also so far the finalist of the final round of GBWC Japan, I do think that this year GBWC Japan is going to be, uh, sorry, GBWC finalist in Japan 
probably champion is going to be Japan again, looking at the entry so far. Um, very, very complex and impressive build. But then again, this year with the big reset, the big winds of change, we may not be able to predict who's going to be winning the trophy this year. Um, there were also some very strong entries from China as well, especially the uh, under 20 category. That particular entry was quite impressive. So look out for China as future GBW champ in the next few years when that particular champ uh, starts to grow and build his entry from scratch to showcase for uh, representing China as well. But all in all, this year, I think, um, yeah, you know, it's been a crazy year. It's already November. We, we are coming to close of 2022 already. This year, apart from GBWC, it was also quite an interesting year for all of us Gunpla builders, right? There were so many great kids coming out, so much so that this year, I think I spent way too much money on just buying Gunpla kits, but not enough time actually building. So my um, resolution for 2023 is actually to build more of my backlog and my collection so that that is actually one of my um, resolution for next year but yeah it's been a crazy year a lot of great kids a lot of big surprises in gbwc malaysia and singapore so i'm glad that you guys have been staying on with this channel following us for all the latest gunpla news and coverage as well we will do a lot more video on um Gunpla tour of Gunpla shops and also Gunpla events in the future. So do stay tuned. There's going to be a lot more new video style coming up from our channel. And yeah, a big thank you to Big Pete for taking all the pictures at GBWC Malaysia. This time around, taking pictures at GBWC Malaysia was a very big challenge. So I'm going to go back to GBWC Malaysia for a little bit here. That is because the lighting in GBWC Malaysia display case was way, way too bright. There was a very big fluorescent light sh hitting the um, display case from the bottom and also a very big spotlight from the top. So with those two from the top and bottom and also the bottom light hitting the, um, the back of the display case reflecting back into the lenses of the camera. Wow, as you can see, a lot of the pictures in GBWC in Malaysia was a little bit overexposed. We spent a lot of time trying to color correct. So what you see here in the pictures and videos for GBWC in Malaysia is not 100% accurate. The colors could be a little bit uh, deeper and darker as well. But then again, overall, I hope next year, GBWC in Malaysia would maybe follow how Thailand and Singapore actually lights up their display case. Uh, what other Thing that I noticed for Malaysia versus Singapore was I do find that the display case in Singapore GBWC was a lot cleaner. There aren't a lot of uh, smudges from fingerprints, you know, people pointing to the entries, looking through the intricate build details. But Malaysia, the display case was a little bit, uh, could be a lot cleaner, I suppose. Yeah, so that, that's something that I look forward to next year. I do hope that next year GBWC in Malaysia, perhaps we can maybe, uh, if the organizers could do it in a place where it's a little bit more nearer to the city instead of Paradigm Mall. Paradigm Mall is a little bit out of the way for quite a few of us. So who knows, right? Maybe next year GBWC in Malaysia could be in some place a little bit more central and accessible for all of us. So yeah, I think probably you have had enough listening to me talking all this while i'm gonna keep quiet for a little bit and i will let you guys see through the rest of the video till then stay safe please continue building your gunpla and i'll see you guys in the next video very very soon until then please sound off of what you think of our points and also notes from the three gbwc in malaysia singapore and Thailand. it's going to be interesting to see how the judges pick the winners this year, given the big change in 2022. Okay, till then, thank you guys for watching and listening to me ramble on for 25 minutes. It was great seeing you guys again in Singapore and also in Malaysia. So hopefully next year, I'll be in Thailand as well. Thank you guys for watching.